Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there lived a man so exceptional that the divine hosts of heaven and hell were forced to take note. A man dangerous enough to bring Satan to his knees, but selfless enough to make God himself raise an eyebrow. How did this come to pass? Well, it all began at a very special birthday party for a very special young lady. Surprise! What is all this? It's your birthday, Kenzie. So? You've never been to a birthday party? No. Oh, like not even growing up? I went to the School of the Americas since kindergarten. We didn't really do birthday parties. But you celebrated Christmas? I don't have to explain myself to you. Oh, Kinsey, this is going to be so much fun. Zinjai made a cake. Jane Austen is here. We'll play some games. What sort of games? <laughs> so you celebrate birthdays by trafficking with spirits? It's spooky and fun. It's a bunch of letters. It's tradition! Every slumber party has to involve a spirit board. Slumber party? How's it work? We ask it a question, and the spirit of the board will reveal the answer. How? Yeah, someone pushes the pointy thing to wherever they want. Wait, wait, wait. Can we go back to you and your slumber parties? No time. All right. Everyone put their hands on the cursor. Cursor? I feel the magic already. All right. Will the president slash god emperor for life ever choose a partner to reign alongside them? No. Ooh, someone's getting married. Shut up, Matt. Who will tame the president's wild heart? <laughs> what are you guys trying to spell? I'm not moving it. That's the spirit, Kinsey. I'm serious. I'm not moving it either. Neither am I. Jezebel? Who the fuck is... Is that not normal? Where'd you get the board? I was going through Zinyak's artifact collection and found it there. Who did it belong to? Alistair Crowley? Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, guys, I think it's laughing at us. Fuck this. I think you're a smart enough piece of wood to see where this is going. Now, are you ready to cooperate? That's more like it. You think we can trust it? It's not like we got a lot of options. So what's the plan? We mount up and go in after the boss? No, I do. No sense in what's left of humanity walking right into a death trap. Someone's gotta live to tell the story. That's a stupid plan, Johnny. I'm leaving you in charge. Hell of a plan, Johnny! Are you serious? I'm coming too. Are you kidding me? How do you plan to come back? Yeah, I try not to sweat the details. You need someone with you that does. No. It's my birthday. Fine. All right, then. You know where my friend is? True to its word, the spirit board opened up another portal and sent Johnny and Kinsey screaming into hell. behind this, I know it. Ultor and the Saints haven't been enemies in years. You really think he's responsible? You don't know him like I do. The boss put him through a window for a reason. The reason was the boss was kind of fucking crazy back then. That's a fair point. 
You know how much easier this would be if we just found a car? You know how much easier this would be if you just gave me a second? All right. Now how are we gonna find the Eltor building? Biggest building down here. Giant altar sign on it. I don't think this is a problem. I'll buy that. driving together on a birthday adventure. Are you always this excited? Generally, I'm a misanthrope. I get it. So this is hell. Not as bad as I thought. It kind of reminds me of Steelport. Shoot him in the face unless he gives us the boss back. What if Dean doesn't have the boss? I'll probably still shoot him in the face. Welcome to hell. Shouldn't you have a receptionist? Such is the plight of eternal damnation. I have a feeling you didn't come here to catch up. Let's talk in my office. Not even death could stop the enterprising Vogel, who wasted no time in setting up an Altor branch in the bowels of hell. Dane was eager to fill Johnny in on the ever-shifting politics of land rights in the underworld. But real estate mattered little to Johnny, who only cared where his friend was. Where'd you put the president? I've been trying to explain that I didn't take them. Bullshit. You expect me to believe you just happen to be the first thing we see in hell. Maybe it's just me, but your thank you sounds more like an accusation. That's probably because he plans to kill you. Okay. I get the trust issues. Can I show you something? The pieces all came together. The President had caused more chaos and destruction than any other in human history. It was only natural that Satan would want them to marry his daughter. They needed a plan. And Johnny had one. I'm gonna shoot the devil in the face. I think you might be skipping some details. No, I said in the face. I like the commitment, but you gotta find a way to get close enough to him in the first place. When's the wedding? I'll just show up and... and then you'll shoot him in the face. Sorry, but it's a little more complicated than that. These things are tied to the soul. You won't be able to enter without one. So how do we get one? You get his attention. I know some places that are of particular value to the father of the bride. You hit those, you'll get your shot. Wait, why would Satan give out an invitation for destroying his stuff? Oh, he won't, but it should piss him off enough to get him to attack Johnny personally. Either the devil kills Gat and Ultor gets the construction contracts to rebuild what was destroyed, or Johnny kills Satan and I'll have to pay less taxes. It's pretty win-win. That's why you're helping us? To make more money in hell? Hell's what you make of it, sweetie. Works for me. What you got? All right. Satan had entrusted the day-to-day -day running of hell to five archdukes, and Dane knew how to find them all. But beyond that, not everyone in Hell was content to go along with Satan's status quo. There were others who shared Dane's ambition for power, and the Altor Mogul knew that the key to unseating Satan lie in gaining their aid. But before Johnny set out to wage war against the Prince of Darkness, Dane had one final gift. An artifact that he had spent fortunes on. 
Lucifer's Cracked Halo. This holy relic granted Johnny the majestic wings of the Morning Star. However, he still needed help in learning how to use them. You got me out in the sticks, now what? Would it kill you to show a little excitement? You're about to experience angelic flight, for Christ's sake. Dane, someone needs a nap. Great, now you should have just enough clusters to power up your halo. Start slow, try to jump over to that next island. Also, the longer you charge your wings before jumping, the further you'll go. Hey, you didn't fuck it up. Good job. Now get up that cliff. Don't worry, if something looks too high, just keep on jumping off the wall. Remember to ch Now it's time to fly. You heard of crawling before walking? Well, in this case, you need to jump before you can fly. Launch yourself in the air with a jump, and then hold your wings out to glide to that next island. I put out some orbs to show you the path. You'll have to dive to reach the next island. Do that by pointing your head down. Don't worry, the rest of your body will follow. Put a shiny flap orb out in front of you. Collect the orb, and your wings will flap to gain speed. All right, now try flapping those wings on your own. Do a flap on your way to the next island. Gotta pick it up. The exact opposite of diving is climbing. Climbing will slow you down and eventually cause you to stall. And trust me, stalling sucks. You can flap while gliding to gain additional speed. So the faster you're going, the higher you can fly. Now try to reach the island up there. Time to take the training wheels off for the final lesson. Flying takes stamina. If you run out in midair, you are going to drop like a rock. A stupid, stupid, stamina-less rock. Last island is right under those lava falls. Notice how... This feels good. Let's get you back to the old tour building. I want to run through all the stuff you can do to hurt Satan. Sure thing. See you soon. Here's the deal. If you want some face time with Satan, you need to get his attention. Now, Satan hates being challenged, so anything you do to undermine his control is good. Fraud, mayhem, shooting demons in the face, anything. You can keep track of Satan's wrath with this handy meter. Get it high enough and you'll be having drinks with Big Red in no time. I've compiled a list of shit to do, so take a look and do whatever sounds fun. Oh, one more thing. We have some potential allies down here. Trust me, you want to impress them.
Abandoned ship! We've been boarded! <laughs> Damn things off my ship! Never should have fucked with me. I hope there's not something ridiculous like a hundred of these to find. I got a bit of treasure in that chest over there. The weapon you find inside may help with our little imp problem. Someone these these. seems to serve as my crew. I forgot what a handful they could be. Once aboard, they wouldn't listen to their captain. They ran amok in the bowels of the ship. Drop the pirate voice. What pirate voice would that be? Wow. Zinyak's destruction of Earth had a profound impact on the afterlife. To heaven, it was a logistical nightmare. Saint Peter's meticulous nature drove purgatory wait times to unbearable levels. Meanwhile, in hell, where souls in pain were used as currency, it created a new era of prosperity for the wickedly enterprising. This economic boom resulted in the coffers of hell to be overflowing, which in turn piqued the interest of the most notorious man that sailed the Seven Seas. Long had Blackbeard been a thorn in Satan's side, robbing tax collectors on a semi-regular basis. But the promise of an immeasurable fortune drove him to be even bolder. An arrangement was reached. Blackbeard would provide information on strategic targets in exchange for a share of the profit. Johnny, who was interested in murder, not money, happily agreed. I grant ye the ability to summon my crew whenever they're needed. Check out the vending machine near the Ultor building. Is it a special vending machine? No. Have you bought stuff from a store already? Probably. But I would be remiss as your guide if I didn't show you the basics.
better and better. Running out of juice. The Forge is prime real estate in hell. This smoggy shithole is located over the richest mineral veins in the afterlife. You want to hurt hell's infrastructure? Here's where you do it. My lawyer, Legal Lee, figured out a way to get some gold-level clients a fast track out of hell. The more abuse you put these guys through, the more years we can shave off. Lee suggested running clients through the designated intersections to boost their punishment. Oh, and dive in front of those vehicles on fire for bonus points. I mean, let's face it, the more they hurt, the sooner we can get these wretched bastards out of here. While his wife Laura was admitted into heaven, the Heavenly Father was less forgiving of Paul Tobias, whose shirtless antics as a crazed drug dealer firmly earned him a place inside a great inferno. However, ever the optimist, Tobias tried to look on the bright side of being transformed into a husk. After all, while the removal of his signature dreadlocks was a disappointment, he was finally free from having to wear pants ever again. But while Perpetual Commando appealed to Tobias, he still yearned for Laura and her delightful snickerdoodles. Touched by his story and terrified by his demeanor, Legal Lee worked with renewed purpose to unite the two lovers. <laughs>